Welcome to Tech Talks. Our security edition today is focused on Splunk Phantom modular workbook development. Tech Talks is a series of short webinars focused on features and best practices within use cases. We value you, our customer, and want you to continue in your Splunk journey. Our experts help create these tips and tricks, and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. I'm Olivia Courtney, a Security Product Marketing Specialist, and I'm excited to share this information with you about Splunk Phantom. First, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Sam Hayes. Hi, thanks, Olivia. Uh, my name is Sam Hayes. I'm the Senior Technical Community Manager focused on Splunk's SOAR products, and today I'm going to be talking about modular workbook development in Phantom. Thanks, Sam. During this Tech Talk, we'll do a quick overview of Phantom workbooks. We'll introduce you to how to make these workbooks more dynamic with modular workbook development, and Sam will walk us through a live demo so we can see this in action. We'll also have some additional resources available to help you take advantage of the custom function capabilities in Splunk. Our team will be available for Q&A throughout over the Q&A feature, and if you watch a recorded version of this webinar, please continue the conversation through the Splunk community website for any follow-up questions. So let's start with workbooks. Phantom workbooks allow you to codify your security standard operating procedures into reusable templates. They're lists of standard tax, optionally broken into phases, that analysts follow to process events or cases. These workbooks are static representations of the tasks that analysts need to perform. They can even be chained together to form a more comprehensive workflow. This example workbook captures the steps an analyst might take if a device has been stolen. You can see the various phases that represent things like securing the account, bricking the device, and so on. This is very powerful and a great starting point to captured processes and procedures in the system. However, as the complexity grows and edge cases are discovered and need to be accounted for, how can we make this more flexible when there is a variation in work of the analyst? I'd love to pass this over to Sam to explain further. Hey, thank you, Olivia. Let's take a deeper look at that workbook. Here on my screen, you can see that I've got the same workbook open, and it looks pretty good. But as an analyst familiar with security assessments, you may realize that there are potentially different risks associated with the theft of a personal versus a corporate device. On the personal side, there might be company email or files synced from our online file storage platform, or even other shadow IT that's, that includes uh, corporate data. Now, if it's a corporate device, maybe we're rolling out an encryption service, but only some of the devices have been encrypted because we're just not finished yet. The point is, there's frequently variability in the tasks an analyst must do, and these can be challenging to represent in a Phantom workbook. Within Phantom, this inflexibility can be handled in a couple of ways. As an example, one solution uh, looks like this. We can represent those conditionals within the workbook itself, and here you can see that I've got a conditional spelled out as part of the phase, but subconditions have to be specified within the tasks themselves. And we can imagine an analyst going through this and jumping past phases or not completing certain tasks. So this is a poor experience for the analyst because it introduces human decision making uh, for what kinds of things must be done. And it introduces risk to the company in the form of potential missteps or inconsistent applications of the SOP. There are variations on this theme that I've seen and tested myself, uh, but none have gotten to the level of quality or granularity that I would have required when running my own security team. So let's discuss the modular workbook design pattern. For this pattern to work, the first step is to codify well-known discrete processes, which are really just tightly coupled sets of actions, into individual workbooks. For example, this msecure account is a small set of actions that are used to describe the company policy of what it means to secure an account. Things like generating a password, setting the password, revoking uh, persistent tokens, maybe calling or texting the user. Now here you can see I've got a few of these already done and have established a naming convention of M underscore to clearly indicate that, a, that it's a module and not some complete workbook. So why do I do this? Well, there's two reasons. Number one, uh, we want workbooks to be reusable, whatever the use case, and don't want to have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, number two, uh, we want a single source of truth. So in the example of the M underscore secure account, we want to have a single global standard of what it means to secure an account. And then any workbook that requires this action has one place to go. Similarly, if 
any changes to the process are needed, we only have one, we only have to change it here, and then we're done. Now you might imagine that if I'm using a traditional workbook design pattern, each workbook that requires securing an account has to re-describe those steps, which itself introduces risk in the form of a missing step or maybe missing an update when the process inevitably changes. So I've been using the stolen device example to discuss this, this procedure, and so we're going to build on that with the following diagram. So we're going to say that this diagram represents a codified SOP as defined by the security team with legal and the CISO's approval. Now I am aware that a stolen device scenario will probably have more variation than this, but this is just a demo. So let's walk through it briefly. When a device is stolen, we are immediately going to secure the account as defined in the M Secure Account Workbook, regardless of the circumstances of the theft. Remember, this workbook is already built and we don't have to think about it. We just add it to the investigation. Next, we're going to determine if the device was encrypted. And if it was, we're going to delete those keys and thus brick the device. Uh, if it wasn't, we have to determine whether or not the device had sensitive information on it. If the device does have sensitive information, uh, then we need to escalate that to the legal team to determine what the right next steps are. But if it doesn't have sensitive information, then we just are going to pass to the next phase. Because while it's not encrypted, it also doesn't have sensitive information, and we can move on. Next, we determine the value of the device. If it's more than $1,000, then we're going to file a police report and then an insurance claim. Otherwise, we're just going to file the insurance claim. And finally, we kick off the provisioning process to replace the user's gear. One more quick observation. Uh, these types of events, the stolen device example, can have at least two instantiation points. First, you know, perhaps a user calls the analyst on the phone and reports the theft. In these cases, the analyst will likely need to be prompted by a playbook to fill out the conditions after they've determined the answers. In the other case, maybe there is some upstream source of truth on which we can rely. For example, maybe the user called the help desk who collected the data in ServiceNow and kicked open a phantom workflow. In that case, we may already have the answers to the questions like, was the device encrypted from the upstream source? Uh, and of course, it is possible that it's a hybrid of prompts and already available data. Uh, but for this demo, I'm going to cover the prompt-related and automatic variations. With our modular workbooks built, we can now utilize custom functions, which were introduced in Phantom 4.9, uh, and playbooks to more accurately represent the flow of work for a specific event type using what I call controller workbooks. Let's look at a playbook that represents the process of handling a stolen device. And first, we're going to look at the controller that uses prompts for interaction. Here you can see that these custom function blocks are used to add those modular workbooks to the event under certain conditions. So, as we had seen in the diagram, the very first thing is to secure the account, which we have this analog right here. And the next thing is to determine if it's encrypted. In this prompt, you can see, is the device encrypted? And then we make a decision whether it was encrypted or not. If it was, we're going to brick the computer. And if it's not, then we're going to prompt and ask if there's sensitive data. You can see that this is very similar each of these decisions is uh, encompassed with a prompt and a decision block, and then each action is one of these custom functions. So here we ask, uh, did the device contain sensitive information? Here we determine whether it did or did not. If it does, then we add the contact legal workbook. And if it doesn't, we simply move over to this prompt where we ask the value or whether the value is greater than $1,000. And again, we make a decision based on the answer, and then we add the appropriate modular workbooks as, as necessary. Let's go ahead and create a demo of this. So I'll create a new event. I'll call it stolen device one. And here I'm going to run the playbook that you just saw, prompt. All right, you can see that the playbook immediately added these the secure account modular workbook, and I've been prompted. So if we look at the prompts, you can see that the very first question is, was the device encrypted? And if I say no and complete, 
it's going to prompt me the, follow, the appropriate follow-up question. Did the device contain sensitive information? And if I say yes here, then you can see what will immediately happen is the contact legal has been added. And finally, I get prompted again because we're now at the device value section. So I will say uh, the device was greater than $1,000, and I'll complete that task. And you can see here that the file police report, file insurance claim, and new equipment provisioning were all, were all added. The other possibility is that your upstream data source provides the required information. So I'm going to simulate this uh, by using a Python script, and it'll create an event for me. I'm going to break down all of the moving pieces for you on, on this demo, starting here with the Python code. So this short Python script uh, essentially is going to be using the container uh, REST API endpoint to create an event for me. And I specify the body of the event that will be created. We'll come back to that in a second. And then finally, I post that body to the endpoint, and a new event is created. In the Python code, the body of the event has a custom fields dictionary with answers to the questions. But where do these go? Well, we go over to Administration, Event Settings, Label Settings. You can see that I have an event entitled Stolen Device. This label has three custom fields that mirror the custom fields in the Python. Device encrypted, device encrypted, device value, value, and device contains sensitive, sensitive data right there. And these fields are fundamentally the same as the prompts you had seen in the previous demo. And these fields will be used to execute the playbook logic and add the correct workbooks instead of using prompts. Lastly, I have a playbook that is substantially similar to the first one that I showed you, except that there's no prompts, and the playbook is marked as active so that it runs as soon as an event is ingested. When I run this Python, which again is a stand-in for other upstream sources such as ServiceNow, a new event will be created. If we look at this event, we can see that the stolen device automatic has already fired and the appropriate modular workbooks have already been assigned based on the data that came in in the event. Uh, the data also can be seen in the HUD right here. So those custom fields show up right here for you to review. So at a high level, this is what the modular workbook design pattern is and how it might help better represent branching logic that we all have to deal with every day. So you've seen modular workbook development for a stolen device, but what else can you use this design pattern for? Modular workbook development can be used for pretty much anything. To name just a few, there's phishing, impossible travel scenarios, malware investigations, and the like. But really, any wholly or partially deterministic process that may have diverging steps is a good candidate for consideration. Thanks, Sam. And now that you've seen modular workbook development in action, we'd like to offer some additional resources for you to continue on your Splunk journey. Check out Sam's blog, Adaptable Incident Response with Splunk Phantom Modular Workbooks, to recap more of what we showed you today. The Custom Functions Tech Talk goes in-depth on how to utilize custom functions to its full potential, a key component of modular workbook development. We've also linked our Phantom product tour that will allow you to see all Phantom capabilities, and our community Slack channel is a great way to get quick answers to your questions. You can also continue your education through our learning paths and certification. And of course, don't forget to check us out at DotConf20. You'll get all of these links in a follow-up email. As I mentioned earlier, whether you are joining us live today or watching this at a later date, please continue the conversation with us on our Splunk Community website. This site includes a Q&A section where you can search Phantom for more best practices, a new discussion section with security tech talks where you can ask more questions about this tech talk, and Splunk Ideas where you can submit new product enhancements. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to join us today. Please tune back in for future Tech Talks. We are so excited to share this series with you.